go to heaven and some people go to hell? Give me one answer. Well, literally, there's six billion answers to that question. I'd have to get each individual's response, if they would be honest with me, I'd have to ask them, why do you reject Jesus? Why do you accept Jesus? Why do you ignore Jesus? Why do you follow Jesus? Everybody would have a different answer. So it's case by case. Now the case that I know, is our family in this church. Okay? They were on their way to church because God told them, come to church, and our church happens to be on Saturday night. They're on their way driving to Caroline. They see the smoke, drive back. They warn a few people, got their two cars out escaped with their lives, three children saved. Why were they saved? Well, we know because you're here at this church. You, just, you were just given the answer. Now, if you walked on their property or you walked in their town and saw all the horrific uh, f- destruction by fire, you say, wow, gee, eeny, meeny, miny, mo." you know? Which way is it going to go? Who knows? You know, some died, some lived, some died, and nobody knows. No, if you ask individually, case by case, if you could get to the bottom of it, and if people would give you a truthful answer, you'd get the right answer, the truthful answer for everybody. Okay? Some people may have heard God say, hey, clear your land. And one guy cleared his land. It was, was snapped, it was given a fine of $50,000, was slapped with a fine, $50,000. Maybe he heard God and said, clear the land, even though the government doesn't believe in God and doesn't care what God says. Well, he cleared the land. He says, well, in that area, everybody burned down except him. Again, if you're driving along and you say, oh, gee, isn't that a random thing? Well, his house is standing and and God destroyed one and God kept the other. What a capricious, weird God. No, it's not like that. But why do some live? Why do some die? It has to be judged on a case-by-case basis. Why are some healed? Why are some not healed? How would I know, right? Unless I got a chance to minister to them and talk to them, and if they were honest with me, and I got lots and lots of stories about this, if I can have a chance to talk to to people, I can get to the bottom of why they're healed or not healed. Most of the time, okay? And I've done that many times. All right, but but let me um, give you a scripture. Luke chapter 13. God's word brings light, doesn't it? God's word helps. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hmm. Before we read Luke 13, let me say this. I have a a small pet peeve. At times like this, I really dislike the frequent use of the word luck. Now, I come from Asia where luck is a god. Asians worship luck. Asians... Uh, uh, believe luck controls their destiny. We are Christian. We don't believe in luck. We don't be- luck is an idol. We believe in God. We believe there's an intelligent, rational, moral God. And we cooperate with Him. We relinquish some of our control and let Him control our life. Let Him be Lord. That's what it means. We call Jesus Lord. He can control us. He can tell us what to do. Let Him do that, then our lives begin to change. I don't believe in luck. So, you know, the funny thing is, If something bad happens, it's God's fault. But if something good happens, oh gee, we're lucky. And that just bugs me. People survive and say, gee, I was lucky. But if you died, you'd say, God is so mean and nasty. That doesn't seem right, does it? You, You got a double standard. Stick by the same standard. God is good. God kept many people alive. God warned people. God rescued people. It's not luck right? We ought to take the the opportunity to say that every chance we get. It's God that saved our lives, not luck. All right, Luke chapter 13. Let me give you heaven's perspective on this. It is a tragic thing. It is a terrible thing. But, you know, don't just look at things from earth's perspective. Look at heaven's perspective. Luke 13, verse 1. There were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. 
or those 18 on whom the tower of Siloam fell and killed them. We, we use this scripture at the Twin Towers. Remember that? When the Twin Towers fell? Actually, there's a similar story in the Bible. Towers fell on people and they died. Jesus says, I have an answer to this. God always has an answer. God anticipates every problem. God answers every question. If you only take the time to come to church and follow Jesus, he would do that. Why? Because he cares for you. But he can't force you to come to church. He can't force you to come to home group. He can't force you to go to Bible school. It's up to you. That way, on the day of judgment, it's fair. How come he was more blessed? Well, he came to church and he followed me. What are you going to say to that, right? That's what's going to happen on the day of judgment, guys. I'll just give you a forewarning. Okay, so he says, I got an answer. Here, 18 people on whom the Tower of Siloam fell and killed them. Do you think they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. The, the, the earth perspective on the bushfire is it's a horrific tragedy. I mean, and I'm sure like the news, they love this kind of stuff because it is sensational. It, it uh, gets the, the ratings up. People tune in. People switch in. It's a bit morbid, but they know that's what sells the news. It's sensational. But if you look from heaven's perspective, we could look over heaven's banisters. You know that as far as heaven can see down on earth, the number of people that die on earth has remained the same. Do you understand that? The bushfire did not increase the rate of death on planet earth. From heaven's perspective, the same number of people, six billion people entered the world and six billion people will exit the world. Guaranteed. And heaven is not so concerned how you died as much as where do you go after you die? Does that make sense? So Jesus says, well, I know that it's news in the Jerusalem Post, 30 AD. Oh, the tower fell. Look, 18 people died. Catastrophic. Or look, Pilate killed these people while they were at church, basically. They're giving sacrifice. Catastrophic, horrific, disastrous. But Jesus says, you know what? You who are watching the fire and didn't die, you will die in the same way unless you repent. People say the bushfire is like hell. No, it's not. You're kidding. The bushfire is nothing like hell. Hell is worse. Hell never ends. Hell has demons in them that would love to torture you because you belong to them if you have sin in your life. You don't belong, we don't belong to God unless we get rid of the sin. And only Jesus can get rid of our sin. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course it does. The Bible makes sense. So the perspective from heaven's window is that 150,000 people die every day. I think that's something worth weeping about. They'll never be on the news. The cameras won't come and, and, and roll with the film to show you 150,000 people die every 24 hours. And many of them go into the eternal bushfire. Not because it's God's fault, not because God delights in it, but because they refuse to hear the gospel or they never heard the gospel, which is worse. It's our responsibility to tell them the gospel. This is why we go out to the nations. This is why we make CDs and DVDs and send them out all over the world. We want people to have an opportunity we're all going to die the same way. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's bushfire. Bushfire would be horrible, but we're all going to die. What matters is what happens to you afterwards. Amen? All right, shall I do one more? This is a real simple one, so let, let me tell you. This is a real conversation I've already had. If God can do anything, why didn't he stop it? I was speaking to a an elderly gentleman, he comes from a, a Catholic background. And uh, obviously, he, he doesn't read the Bible because uh, he was very animated. He was, man, he was angry at God. And he was pointing his finger at God and at me and say, why didn't God do nothing? Why didn't God do nothing? I think that's the way he said it. Why didn't God do nothing? You know, he kept saying, why didn't God do nothing? Why didn't God do nothing? 
Say, what, does God enjoy killing all these people? Now, I listened to him for a while, but when he said that, I said, um, be careful, because you just blaspheme God. And I know he, being a good Catholic, would at least respect the Ten Commandments. Well, blasphemy is the third commandment. It's the third worst sin. It comes before murder. You just falsely accuse God. You better have hard evidence for that. Oh, he kind of piped down, but he still, his hands were moving, his fingers were pointing. He says, if God can do anything, why didn't he stop the fire? I said, let me ask you this. If God can do anything, why doesn't he make you get on your knees, repent of your sins, follow Jesus, and come to my church? (laughs) Why can't God make you repent? And you've just blasphemed God twice now. He says, how? How? I said, well, first, you said he didn't do nothing, so he's powerless. Second, you said, if he can do something, why didn't he do anything? So you're saying he's careless. I said, why don't you follow Jesus Christ? Why don't you follow Jesus Christ? You have the option. You have the power. You can do good. You can make the right decision. Why do you make the wrong decision? He starts asking me a slew of questions. Lots of questions. You know what? The the thing about answering questions is it never ends. People hide behind questions. I know that there's some people who want questions answered because if you answer it, they will turn to Christ. But there are people, you can answer them to your blue in the face, give them the right answer forever and ever, and just it leads to another question and another question and another question. He asked me, what's the difference between the Catholics and the Christians? What's the difference? And he repeats it like, I don't understand or I'm not prepared to answer. I I give you an answer right now. What's the difference between the Catholics and the Christians? I said, the Pope. (laughs) Why don't you follow the Pope? I said, because there's no Pope in the Bible. (laughs) He said, but you have to start a church. Why can't the Pope start his own church? I said, I didn't start my church. I said, God called me to start the church. Not my church, not my decision, it's not a career move. Something that God did, and I never present myself to my church as the infallible Pope. I don't call myself the father of the church. I don't ask people to follow me, I'm just simply pointing people to Jesus. That's my job, is just point you to Jesus. So what's the problem with that? Is there anything wrong with that? So you didn't answer any of my questions. I said, what do you mean? You just asked me a question. What's the difference between the Catholics and the Christian? I just answered it to you. It's the Pope. He's, he, you know his mind is racing for the next question because I am actually answering his questions. So I said to him, I said, let me ask you a question. Why don't you follow Jesus? Why don't you follow Jesus? He's a little, little man, but man, he's feisty. He said, I follow Jesus. I follow Jesus more. I said, excuse me, you follow Jesus more? How? He says, I follow Jesus more. I said, more than what? I follow Jesus more than you. (laughs) I said, I find that hard to believe because you've just blasphemed God twice, and I wouldn't dare to bring an accusation against God unless I had solid evidence, right? Now, I used to accuse God. I remember the days when I used to put my fists up at God. I'd be angry at God. I said, why did God take away my family? I grew up in a broken home. No father. Why did God do that? Then I grew up, and I realized my father was a cheat. I'll just let you know. My father was a cheat, and he made his own decision to cheat on his family. God did not come down and make him cheat on his family. So he had a choice. So before I accuse God of something and blaspheme him, I really need to be sure that I'm right about this. So I find it hard to believe that you follow Jesus more than me because I would never dare to accuse God unless I was absolutely sure. He said, you talk good. (laughs) He said, nice to be smart. I said, it's not about being smart. I said, I didn't grow up with Christianity. I grew up with, with Catholics, with Buddhists, with Muslims, all sorts of different religions. And now you know in Australia, I've told you so many times, this is why God uses us to write the book on Buddhism. The only thing he picked up on was Buddhism. Australians want to talk to you not about Jesus, they want to talk to you about Buddha. That's fine, I, I know about Buddha as well. He said, why, don't, why aren't you Buddhists? 
I said, because the Bible is true. See, when I, I read all the other religions, we all pretend about how good we are because we do these religious rules and we do these religious things. And we, but I read the Bible and the Bible says over and over, we're no good without God. I said, you know what? That's the truth. I said, my father's no good. I said, I'm no good. And I said, my children will be no good. Without Jesus' help, we'll all be no good. So this is the only honest book that I can find. That I need to ask for help. I need to ask, I need to be humble to ask Jesus to come and save my life and help me. And then things will change and things will get better. And that's why I'm not Buddhist. This little, little man, he said, if you keep going this way, you'll be all right. <laughs> it's not about me being all right. It's about you being all right. And then why don't you follow Jesus? He says, well, I'll think about it. And the sad thing is whenever people say, I'll think about it, I know they're not going to do it. They're lying to me. That's the worst thing is you're already sinning. You're already far from God. You're already blaspheming. And then you add on top of it a, a, a blatant lie. I've never had anybody come back to me who said, well, oh, I'm going to go think about it. Yeah, would you like to call me when you finish thinking about it? No. Because it's a lie. It's the, the discomfort of people. Oh, well, you know, I, I'm not comfortable with hearing the truth anymore, so uh, I don't know what to do, so I'll just lie to you. If you say you're going to think about it, I'm telling you, you better have one sleepless night tonight. You better not shut your eyelids until you get this right. Is there a God? Did he die on the cross for you? Are you accountable to him? Or is it just we're a pack of animals and we got nowhere to go and we become dirt when we die? That better get resolved if you say, I'm going to think about it, right? Okay, all right. Well, I see you're all with me here. All right, we asked how many questions today? Four. Okay, so if you keep, keep your notes, all right, if you keep your notes, bring it.